I'm Melvin Burgess and I'm here today in Lumbank, Arvon, with Lucy Christopher, who's so well known for her debut novel, Stolen. And uh, we're here today to talk a little about and to celebrate her new book, which is out later this week, The Killing Woods. So, Lucy, tell us a little bit about the new novel. The Killing Woods is really about darkness and about uh, characters uncovering and discovering the ability for dark urges within themselves and realising what they could be capable of. It circles around the death of a teenage girl called Ashley Parker, who was found in the woods one night. And the novel is told from two perspectives, Damon, who is the boyfriend of Ashley Parker, and Emily, who is the daughter of the man who was arrested for the murder of Ashley Parker. And throughout the novel, Emily and Damon come together to try and uncover the truth. What was it exactly that made you want to write such a, such a dark novel for young people? I didn't set out to write a dark book, believe it or not. <laughs> I uh, originally went to Central Africa to the rainforest and had this idea that I would write a really plot-based thriller concerning a reality TV show Hunger Games type book. Then I read the Hunger Games and thought, oh my goodness, I can't write that book. <laughs> Everyone will think I've copied Suzanne Collins. Um, so I came home and I wandered about the woods near my house and thought about what I was going to write and two things stayed with me from the, the African trip and one was the power of woods and the power of being inside woods and I really wanted to keep that and the other thing was the darkness of being inside woods and it was also probably the fact that I was struggling with knowing what to write that my own dark fears were coming into the narrative and what I was trying to write so it really became quite a sort of organic feeling out this book as I went along process. You're really well known for your debut novel, Stolen, Lucy, which is set in Australia. And the desert, the outback, has such a, a strong presence in that book. And in The Killing Woods, uh, also the dark woods there has a real presence. It's a really characterful entity in the story. Is setting an important thing for you in, in your writing process? Uh, setting, for me, is the most important starting point for writing anything, really. Um, all three of my books have started with the settings first. Um, so with Stolen, I, all my life I've wanted to write about the desert in Australia and I was just looking for the right story to write about the desert. And The Killing Woods definitely came from the setting because I was so stuck trying to write a plot-based novel that I ended up just walking and walking and walking around the woods behind my house and trying to, to get a story as I was walking. And that got me thinking, right, what could happen in these woods? What, what could people be doing here that might be fun? What could people be doing here that might be quite scary? And I just started to write about the woods themselves and then putting characters into it. And the plot sort of came very gently from there. So setting is absolutely the most important starting point for me. And then the plot and the characters and then the theme comes from that. OK, and have you already started to think about where you might be setting your new book? My new book will be set in a very different setting to the woods and I've had a few ideas circulating around my head and the, uh, the most common image that keeps coming up is wild foam tipped ocean around some islands out in the middle of the sea. Young adult fiction is really on the rise at the moment. There are so many more writers um, producing books in that genre. Uh, sales are very, very strong. Are there any writers who have been particularly significant for you in that area um, during the course of your writing career? And uh, could you see any new writers just coming up over the horizon? It would be dishonest of me if I didn't say you, Melvin. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I think you, particularly for um, as I was developing as a writer and as I, when I was at university I read all of your books and I remember reading Junk and it blew my mind away and I thought this is what I want to do. Yourself and another writer called John Marsden were my two very formative writers that really, really, both of you really influenced me to write truthful, accurate, character-led pieces of work. So certainly both of you are like the, the big founding ones for me. Um, new writers, I think there's a lot of exciting new writers coming through at the moment. Um, one of my friends um, is an author called CJ Skews. I think she writes some great, exciting, funny work for, for teens and I'd love it if she was a little bit more well-known at the moment. Um, I think there's some fantastic new writers coming out of Australia as well, where I grew up. Um, Vicky Wakefield is a really exciting writer to watch who writes hard-hitting 
drama for, um, for younger and older teens, actually. Before. Chapter 1. Saturday night, August. Emily. Something was draped across Dad's outstretched arms. A deer? A fawn that was injured? It was sprawled and long-legged. Something that had been caught in a poacher's trap, maybe. A mistake. So this is where Dad had been all this time, in the woods and cutting this creature free. I breathed out slowly, squinted at the mist that hovered around Dad like a ghost. I took my hand from my bedroom window, leaving the memory of my skin on the glass. Then I raced down the stairs, through the hall and into the kitchen out back. Throwing open the door to the garden, I waited for him there. It was ages since Dad had brought back something injured, and he had never brought back a deer. Though I could remember helping him free a roe deer from a snare in the woods once. Back then his hands had moved quickly and gently, darting from the wire on the doe's leg and then to her neck for a pulse, stroking her constantly. This was something like that again. Saving another deer could be a good thing for Dad. Something to take his mind off everything else. To help bring him out of his dark place. I heard Dad's feet scuff on the cobbles in the lane. Saw his movement. I tried to pick out the shape of the deer's body, but it was all wrong. The legs weren't long enough. Neither was its neck. I took a step towards them. And that's when it made sense. The shape. It wasn't a deer Dad was carrying. It was a girl.